Hi everyone, welcome back to Be Rich. I have Shashir with me here. Yesterday, as I was talking about the Hyundai IPO and what had the fallout that happened over there, I did mention towards the end of the video about gold and what's happening in gold. I said I would bring Shashwat over to explain what is happening in gold. So as promised, here is Shashwat. And Shashwat, without wasting any further time, what's happening in gold? Well, let's be frank. Over the past year, gold has done exceptionally well. And there's no surprise that gold has done exceptionally well. If all of our keen viewers who do keep track of every video we put out must know. We've also discussed the relationship between crises which go on in the world and how that affects gold. And finally, those of you who have been watching us from, uh, I think, since last year have also seen that we've discussed how China is, was buying up gold as of very recently. And this explains a lot of what has happening with gold over the past year. So maybe we can break it down step by step for everyone at home. So which topic would you like to pick up first? What I'd like to know is your uncle, my brother was saying, there's a great possibility that gold could be as much as $3,500 next year. Do you think, what do you think about that? I mean, how is this possible from where we are right now to almost going to 3,500 seems like a really long road. But uh, he says it's quite possible. How is that and why is this possible? Why is, this, why is he kind of making this kind of a statement? Okay. First, let's see where gold has come from and where it could possibly go. First point which we have to see is that over 12 months, the price of one ounce of gold has increased from $1,947 to $2,715 at the time of making this video. A gain of almost 40%. This comes during a time when interest rates in the US have only gone down by 0.5 percentage points. And people at home need to see how small of an interest rate cut versus the magnitude of the gold price increase. A lot of people are arguing that, of course, gold market had run ahead of the interest rate cuts, expecting interest rate cuts. But what I'd like to say is that if 0.5 can cause such a huge rise, just imagine when Kamala Harris or Donald Trump comes into power and Donald Trump with his uh, corporate tax cut and Kamala Harris with her increased public welfare spending. Either way, inflation seems to be the main theme of either of their presidencies. And I don't see a world in which inflation pressures are going to ease up over the next presidential term, which means that Jerome Powell has his work cut out for him because right now he's trying to cut interest rates. That's fine. But at some point, he has to quickly find out where it needs to settle the interest rate. And if he undershoots that target, it's very possible that inflation becomes a very big issue in the upcoming presidential terms of either candidates. So that is my first reason. Second reason, it doesn't seem like the conflict in the Middle East is cooling down. Let's look at what's happening in uh, with Iran and Israel. Now we have a whole new country which has been dragged into the Middle Eastern crisis and we see that things are only escalating. Very recently we also got news about Benjamin Netanyahu's house being the target of drones. Though the Israeli Defense Force had taken down two of the drones which were supposed to come to his place, there was one which still made it through and I think collapsed right near his house or something to that effect. The point here is that I'm not trying to fear monger. The main point here is that I'm trying to explain to people that the Middle Eastern crisis seems to be expanding in its size and its impact. So until that gets resolved, me along with many other investors are definitely going to be a bit more cautious when it comes to the investing realm. So that is another point. So, and then finally, the Federal Reserve is of course cutting. We don't know at what pace they're going to cut, but we do know that at this point, they are looking into further cuts uh, in the interest rate. So these are the main reasons which I think is going to cause an upward pressure on the price of gold. So what do you think about these reasons? I agree with you, the audience and me. Thank you for explaining this. So I can understand why gold is possibly can even go to 3,500 next year. There's a possibility of it going and it's a very real possibility. The other question a lot of people are having is, since gold is behaving in this way, what effect is it going to have in the short term or the medium to long term on jewelry companies like Titan and Kalyan Jewelers in India when gold is prices going up 
and it's going to get more expensive. What can we expect on their earnings? What reflection will it have? Well, the thing is, whatever inventory they have, the price of their inventory is going to go up. So they would have sourced this gold for a sum of money. So if let's say we are we are businessmen and we have an XYZ good, which we are buying to flip or we're producing it and then we're flipping it to the consumers. If in the process of buying this gold in bulk or this product in bulk, you and me as producers produce whatever we're producing and we're selling it to the consumer. Gold is special because the value of the product which we're selling is measured in the raw material which we're putting it into the product directly. The grams of gold along with the making charge is what generally consists of jewelry prices. So when you look at jewelry prices go up and it's going to be windfall profits for these jewelry company. So if you are a jewelry company, you're probably if gold prices do end up going up, you are going to have bonanza profits, which you might not have had if gold prices did not go up. So it's a positive force for the price of gold because anyone who has entered a gold shop will see that at the in front of it or inside in a small ticker, they'll say today's price of gold, where they show you what the price of gold is per gram. So this is something which people need to keep in mind. Okay, and some of our viewers have been asking, since they do not know anything about stocks and they do not know anything about investing in the still learning phase they're in, and there's an opportunity here in gold, where gold looks like it's going in an upward trajectory. Even if it doesn't go up to $3,500, there is a good chance it will land in above 3000 They want to see if there's a hedge, they can make a bet on gold in the short term. Would you think that is an advisable bet to make, to buy gold ETFs for the short term till next year in Instead of holding cash in the bank account, if they have some surplus cash they don't need for a year or two, do you think it's a good idea to put it in gold instead of stocks? I think buying gold is a, is a good idea. I think gold has always been an asset, and at least for Indians, which has delivered safe returns over a long period of time when our currency is inflated. So I definitely think that buying gold standalone is not a bad idea at all. But I think timing the gold market could be a bad idea. None of us exactly know when gold is going to go up and when gold is going to come down. Even though my uncle has mentioned that there are many upward pressures on the price of gold and it could go to that point, he is not saying that, you know, this is a commandment, one of, you know, the commandments with Mo- which Moses got from God, that gold prices will go to this price or that price. He is simply saying that there is a possibility given the upward pressure. So those of you at home, you need to take a call on whether you want to be a trader or an investor. I would rather be an investor and I would say if you want to buy gold, buy it and hold it because gold is going to do well regardless of whether you get a bonanza profit next year or not. So if you are an investor and you're going to buy gold, I commend you and I'll pat you on the back as long as you make sure that you're following the principles set out by Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger in terms of long-term investing rather than trying to make a play in the short term and maybe even burning your hands. Great. So there you go, guys. We have been uh, told by Shashat what is happening in the gold market, what to expect in the near term in the gold market and why it's going to happen. And if you are planning to look at gold, he's saying purely look at it as an investor. And when you look at it as an investor, even Warren Buffett has said gold is not a great tool for investment in the long term. Markets will beat it in the long term. So keep that also in mind that you should not be buying gold and forgetting about it like what we were talking about stocks. So buy gold as much as you need for your safety and as a sense of security but if you need gold as an investment do draw a line somewhere in the sand where you say okay i have enough gold because you're better off looking at stocks and second thing what shashwat is saying you should focus on if you have requirement for gold this year or you know for sure let's say you're getting married next year and you have definitely required gold next year you're better off securing the gold at a lower rate today than thinking and postponing it till next year and then finding out all the budgets you have put aside for your wedding and your gold purchases might have actually gone up by 40 to 50 percent by the time. So that is another thing to take into consideration is what Shashwat is saying. Anything else you want to add Shashwat before I wind this up? Uh, yeah, just one point. I am in complete agreement and I don't think I emphasized enough on the fact that stocks do end up outperforming gold in the long run. So like my uncle said, There is a point where you have to draw the line in the sand and you have to say there's enough of, you know, that very lustrous looking asset and it's time to move on to proper investments where proper, and I mean proper in the sense that investments which give you a yield because gold doesn't give you a yield per se. So that's, that's the point I wanted to make. Yeah. 
Great. So thanks for watching the video today. I hope it answered some of the questions you've been thinking about gold. This also applies to gold related stocks. How you should analyze companies like Titan or Kalyan Jewelers is what uh, you should keep in mind about their earnings and what the future price projections might be of these stocks. Thanks for watching the video again. And we in charge will see you in another one soon. Thank you. Thank you. Hey guys, that my uncles Vinod Srinivasan, Anand Srinivasan and I have rolled out our Substack, which is basically a blog slash newsletter where we're going to post our original research onto it. And we've analyzed macroeconomic trends. And a lot of you know, my uncle Anand Srinivasan and I regularly write for the Hindu. And these articles are also going to be made available for you in the Substack. The link is moatmoteinvesting.substack.com. You'll find it in the description and in the video right now. Um, we hope you go check it out. We've put a lot of time and effort into it. And please give us comments and feedback on what you read. Thank you. It's a great privilege and honor that so many of you in thousands have subscribed to my channel and have supported me. I have written two books in English, The Alchemy of Money and Ordinary Stocks, Extraordinary Profits. These books are published by us and are ready. If you want to procure a copy, send us a message to the WhatsApp number given below and my team would respond to you. If you want an Amazon Kindle copy, you can click the link below. Finally, those who wish to consult with me can send a mail to berichenglish at gmail.com. Once again, I thank you for your support. If you like this video, press the subscribe button of my channel, hit the like button and turn on the bell notification.